Good evening, everybody, and thanks uh, for the great turnout. Just to let you know, um, by a little bit more background, um, I've come up the Southern Motorway today to be here. I'm the son of South Auckland. I grew up in South Auckland, and I've lived in South Auckland for most of my life. Um, and I have to say, I'm proud to, proud to say that. Uh, but what I want to talk today about is what I've called a view from the South, and I want to offer you a perspective of some of the quite, I believe, shameful statistics around South Auckland and the challenge that presents us as a city to become a more inclusive city. I'm not certain where the slide card, the slide comes from. I think it's a joke um, that white people were rescued from South Auckland, but um, <laughs> basically um, that, that's, that's the open slide. Benjamin Disraeli um, said this in the Victorian England that he spoke of, of Britain and, and England and he said, two nations between whom there is no intercourse, no sympathy, who are as ignorant of each other's habits, thoughts and feelings as if they were dwellers in different zones or inhabitants of different planets, the rich and the poor. And I think as a consequence of um, the work that um, uh, Thomas Piketty has done with respect to rising inequality in, our, in, in, in the global society, I think we, we, we're tracing our way back to that sort of environment, that we have two sets of people who are completely ignorant of how the other part lives. South Auckland is, is to a degree perhaps a, a place in your mind rather than a, a place on the map and it's not well defined by a particular sort of uh, geography but I would suggest to you that it includes the six suburbs of Otahuhu, Māngari, Papatuitui, Otara, Manurau which is my home suburb in Papa, um, Papakura. What I've done is just taken some images of the various um, uh, parts of that, of that place and, and this image here which you can't point to, yeah, right, there we are. The image on the top right hand corner is an image of my favourite football team, the, the mighty Monday with Marlins, who I must say the women are playing in the grand final at um, Mount Smart Stadium on Saturday. South Auckland um, is, is quite, uh, uh, the six suburbs of South Auckland are quite different ethnically. Um, but overall Pacifica people, Pacific people are, are the most numerous, making up something like 40% of that population. Um, European Pākehā perhaps surprisingly make up the second biggest ethnic group and Māori and, and Asian people more broadly defined um, and, uh, make up the rest in equal measure. It's interesting to note too that one third of all the Pacific people who live in New Zealand live in, in, in those six suburbs. So it is a predominantly a Pacific place but it's not entirely and, and, and one of the things you notice is if you had time to add up all those percentages they add up to more than 100% because of course that multi-ethnicity that people identify with, and that is especially a characteristic of uh, South Auckland. I want to deal with several things here as just indicators of, of, of some of the challenges we face in South Auckland. Firstly, talking about uh, declining home ownership. Just under one half of households in the 2013 census were owned by the occupiers, as compared with about 35% um, or 36% of the rest of Auckland. So you can see that, 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 that South Auckland is a predominantly a tenant community, it doesn't have as much control over its environment as many other suburbs and communities do. And in fact, the rate of, in which home ownership was being converted into investment-driven rental property is, 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 is two and a half, three times what it was elsewhere in, in um, New Zealand, in Auckland. If we look at the number of houses that have been built in, in South Auckland relative to the number of people that, that have moved there or been born there, we find that we, over the last five years or so that we've built one house for every seven people compared to one house for every four people across the rest of New Zealand and about one house for every two and a half people across New Zealand. So is it any wonder that we're now starting to see that the pressure on their housing stock starting to spill over with literally people living in doorways, sleeping in cars, with their children in car parks? It's a consequence of, of the serious neglect over the last 10 years really to actually provide any affordable housing in, in uh, South Auckland. Looking at crime rates. One of the things, and it's difficult now to, to identify um, closely um, crime figures because of the way that, that the stats have changed a bit, but, and, and of course we know too that only probably around about a third or less of crime is actually reported, particularly serious assaults. So what we're seeing here in, the, in terms of reporting crime is, is, a, is a tip of the iceberg. But we know that um, in some parts of South Auckland, and in particular um, that the police district doesn't divide up South Auckland quite as, as I would like it, so you've got to take bits of sub-police districts and add them all together. But the two, uh, the two more central ones are uh, Counties Manukau West and Counties Manukau Central. Um, and, the, and, and the chances of, of recording an assault in those, in those places is twice the rate that it is um, 
in the rest of Auckland and at least um, one and a half times the rate um, for the whole of the County's Manuka district. Similarly recorded break-ins um, are nearly 60% higher. So this is a place, as we probably know, and there was a headline in the Her Herald today about a, a, um, a youth fight in the streets of Māori East. Those are fairly common representations of South Auckland. And it's regrettable, but that's in some respects the lived experience of many people. And I have to say most of us are as angry about that as you would be if you lived there. I mean, we, we certainly don't normalise it, we certainly don't accept it, it's just how we have to live. And if we look at rates of youth of offending, uh, the youth in South Auckland are probably 50% more likely to be apprehended for an offence. Whether that's because the police are better at apprehending criminals in South Auckland or whether it's because they, there's more offending, I don't know, but the reality is that we have a significant relative problem with youth offending in our, in our suburbs. Then we pass into pass rates in NCA. Twice as many South Auckland secondary school students leave, leave school without the NCA Level 1 than the rest of Auckland. And if we look at the top end in terms of Level 3 and entry into places like, like, like this, the rate of South Auckland students achieving that Level 3 NCA is, is, is only two-thirds of what it is for the rest of Auckland. So we find that our, our young people face significant disadvantages, and it's no wonder because this, this graph shows the distribution of students by decile in the schools. You'd, you'd, you'd expect, that obviously, in a, in, a, in a lovely, normal world, that, 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 that there's a 10% in each decile, but you find that 55% of South Auckland children go to a decile one school. And in, in, in total, 77% go to a decile one and two school. And of all the children attending decile one, one and two schools in South Auckland, in, in Auckland, 77% 70, 70, of them live in South Auckland. And only 2%, 1.8%, in fact, of children who are attending a decile 9 and 10 school go to a school in South Auckland. And that includes King's College, which, are, which, which, which is actually in South Auckland. So you take King's College out, it's almost nobody, about 200 kids, attend a decile 9 and 10 school. So it shows you just how concentrated this inequality and this, uh, and this relative disadvantage actually is. The whole series of things you could talk about with respect to that as to what happens to children who go to those schools and why, but it's a simple fact that, that there is this huge concentration of poor Aucklanders into these suburbs. I just want to end with, with a comment that, um, that John Key made in, in a, a speech he made in 2007. Um, he said, we are seeing a dangerous drift towards social and economic exclusion. I know we can do better, he said. We have to do better because left unchecked, the problems of a growing underclass affect all of us. And I just want to leave with that as, a, as, as an issue. Whether or not Mr Key's policies uh, have subsequently addressed that as a challenge is, is clearly something we might debate tonight. The reality is, is that, that I certainly agree with that, with that analysis. And what I'd like to do is to offer three things, four, four ideas for us to become a more inclusive Auckland. For me, it seems unlikely that South Auckland will be included in the wider, in wide, in wider, the wider Auckland way of life and, and, and until we make significant progress on the following three things. One is that we address entrenched education disadvantage, including the middle class privilege within the education system. Secondly, that we ensure that no young person, Auckland wide, not just in South Auckland, leaves educational training without a job. Thirdly, that we, we begin with some seriousness rather than just empty rhetoric to provide housing which is affordable, safe and secure. And finally, that we ex accept that if we want people not to live in poverty, that we do need to pay them decent living wages in order, for, in order for them to support their family. Those are the four ideas I want to leave you with, and thank you for your time.